Hey guys, welcome back to Make That Sea Change. Paul here with you again today. Today let's have a look at how to sell arts and crafts online. This is a, a niche that I've been looking at quite a bit lately, mainly through affiliate marketing programs, but it is something that the more I look at it, I think it's the more it's an area that if you are looking to set up an online business and you have a passion or an interest in arts and crafts, then this could be a very, very good area to have a look at. There are so many different aspects, there's so many variations to setting up an arts and craft business online, whether you are instructing people how to do it, whether you're providing patterns, whether you are talking about all the different methods you can use, whether you're selling the, the needles, the threads, the, the canvases, the quilt bits, the you know anything to do with arts and craft, the paints, the pottery, anything that you are looking to sell, there's a market for it. And the other side of it is that it's what always makes niches like this very good is because it's in the, in the hobby niche where people will spend money and they will spend money online. Um, especially with current events going on, it's people are locked at home and it's something that they are spending money on. And you've also got the professional element as well. If you go to any market on any city and anywhere in the world on a weekend, you'll pretty much find homemade arts and crafts that people are selling. And they, I mean, they're great and they're well made and they're, they're a professional, professional business these people have, but they need all the equipment as well. So again, the, the niche has the, the hobby and the professional elements. There's enough there for consumables. So people constantly meet, need more yarns, they need more threads, they need more materials and the, you know, the higher end things that they need like pottery wheels and knitting machines and sewing machines and the like. So, Within the niche, very, very good opportunity, I think, for an online business. That said, as usual, before we get started and I talk you through it all, I'd hate to waste your time. So let's have a quick look in my post at some of, oh, excuse me, at some of the um, stats that I found around arts and crafts online because I'd hate to get you set up and then find out no one's interested in buying it online. Let's have a look. So as we scroll through arts and crafts online, we can look at there that Things like arts and crafts, over 8,000 searches per month. Arts, kids arts and crafts, 700 odd. Free arts and crafts for kids, that's a big market there as well. A number, if you scroll down, you can't scroll down here, but if you scroll down, there's heaps and heaps and heaps on that sort of things. Scrapbooking, my mum does scrapbooking, loves it, spends hours and hours doing it, does, does a great job of it. But you've got scrapbooking supplies, you've got scrapbooking online, ideas, um, digital scrapbooking which is getting more and more popular basically because most of our photos are taken by digital means these days long gone are the days of having a film camera where you go down and get your photographs processed and go back a week later and see what you what's good and what's blurry these ones you take 100 of them instantly on your mobile phone or on your digital camera so you can see all that stuff there so digital scrapbooking is another popular area then you've got knitting just to try and break, break it down, show you 9,300 people search for knitting, knitting needles, baby knitting, machine knitting. Do I cast off knitting? Um, I don't know what that means, but let's say yes. Um, but yeah, very popular there. And just to make sure, um, knitting stitches, 7,200 odd searches a month. Wow. Okay, and just to make sure, so I've got here scrapbooking, knitting, arts and crafts, sewing and painting. You can see how popular they all are. No real big bumps, this bump here, current events. So that's one of the tricks of affiliate marketing or uh, online marketing is knowing when current events can affect your sales and jumping on the bandwagon. But you can see very popular. These numbers probably don't look as good because painting is so popular, but trust me, they're all very, very good markets. Okay, and before we click back, there's three things we need to talk about as we before we get set up, and I'll run through all them in a lot more detail in a second. But the first thing you need to think about is what is your niche? So as I've mentioned, arts and craft is a massive niche, and you see painting, knitting, scrapbooking, embroidery, sewing, crochet, and pottery are all big enough to sustain a, an online business on their own, let alone not putting them into an overarching, um, overarching area. So if you're looking at arts and crafts, you're looking at painting, knitting, scrapbooking, and these can be how to paint, what to paint, what bits you need, all sorts of stuff, which we'll, we'll go through in a couple of seconds. But the first thing we need to do there is obviously think about our niche. Now, as you go through and think about your niche, 
think about what it is that you're trying to to sell from an understanding from let's rephrase that entire sentence think about what it is that you know about what you're passionate about how you're going to work if you're looking to sell anything to do with arts and crafts online do you know a lot about knitting are you passionate about knitting can you can you knit jumpers and sweaters and scarves crocheting can you crochet blankets are you good at talking about crocheting do you know all the what all the number different number knitting needles need do you know how to make beautiful pottery on pottery wheels do you know what clays do the best sort of make the best sort of pots do you know how to prepare them for firing do you know how to fire them do you know how to paint them glaze them whatever it is you do with with pots you know all those sort of things are where you need to think about what your niche is going to be arts and craft is so large that you might struggle to set up an online business around arts and crafts holus bolus unless you're selling all the different um, bits and pieces for them but even then that's a large market so think about the niche that you're doing once you thought about your niche there's two more areas to think about one is the first one is who is your target audience and the second is what problems are you solving now I mentioned before about people who do who want to set themselves up as a hobby something to do and others who are professionals the way that you market things to professionals as opposed to hobbyists could be completely different um, professionals are going to want to know what the best equipment is so they can get their their hearts and crafts manufactured or created or made as quickly as possible so they can have as much made to sell at the markets on the weekend or to sell on through their online website sorry we're talking about online business here to sell on their online website or if they're selling on at markets you're selling them their equipment online so they're going to have a different aspect to people who are being who are setting up from scratch for something to do you're going to need to get a lot more information about if you're dealing with beginners if that's your target audience as opposed to professionals Professional is going to switch off pretty quickly if you take four paragraphs explaining the difference between a size 10 and a size 12 needle for knitting. So you, you think about who your target audience is. And then what problems are you solving? I've already mentioned two problems if you're dealing purely within a knitting niche for professionals and beginners. Beginners, their problem is they don't know what they don't know. So they don't know what they need. So you're going to need to solve the problem for them of what they need. For a professional, they might want to be, they, they're, they might be struggling to knit a scarf with a certain stitch. They, you can explain to them very quickly, okay, you're gonna need a size 10 needle, you're gonna to need to do a half back niche, uh, half back stitch. I don't know if any of them exist, but you're gonna need those and you're gonna to need to follow this technique. Don't throw that at a beginner, they won't have any idea what you're talking about. And that's across the board for any arts and craft niche. But people go online to solve problems. I'm doing pottery, my clay cleats, my pots keep crumbling on the pottery wheel. What is my, what am I doing wrong? You solve that problem for them. You might solve that problem. We'll talk about how you're making sales in a second, but you're solving the problem for someone who's doing pottery, whose clay keeps collapsing on the wheel. There you go. So have a good idea of that. The rest of what we talk about will make a lot more sense. If you know who your target audience is, you know your niche, and you know what problems you're solving for that target audience and within your niche. Okay, how do we sell these products? Well, if you're looking at selling online, there's a number of ways that you can do this. You can sell all the tools, all the, the final um, products. So you can sell woolen jumpers, you can sell glazed pot, garden pots, you can sell um, embroidered quilts, you can sell all the things you need to do that, sewing machines and like via affiliate marketing. So say, for example, you want to sell sewing machines. What affiliate marketing does is you solve the problems by, for, of your readers by explaining to them exactly what each machine does, what's good about them, what's not so good about them, comparing prices, what's the best for the price. And then once you've explained all that, you give your readers a link where they go off to an affiliate, to a vendor who sells them the sewing machine. They handle the sales, they handle the, the um, shipping, they say, handle the customer service you make a commission based on that sale. That's how affiliate marketing works. If you're selling knitting needles, you'll lead them off to a site that sells knitting needles. If you're selling, I don't know, pottery wheels, you'll send them off to a site that sells the pottery wheels. You don't handle any inventory, you don't hold any stock, it means you can sell the latest items because you don't have to worry about technology changes because you've got old stock there. But that's what you do. You write about, the, you sell the problems to your readers and you refer them off to 
problem solving purchases that they can make, which you then earn a commission from. Now, if you're looking to find affiliate programs, let's just go back to my um, site here, for example. So this is just talking about all the, the problem solving and the target audience that we're talking about. So with affiliate marketing, this explains to you what it is. If we do it, sorry, so I've broken this one down into sub niches. So if you do affiliate knitting, for example, here's all the knitting. So knitting and pro, crochet affiliate program, um, knit picks, knitting notions, knitting and crochet yarns. So Wool and the Gang just has all the yarns, heaps of different types of yarns in that one. Um, and then you might get into some of the crafts sites as well. Painting, Artist Network, Art Finder, um, Eco Color, Diamond Art Club. So all those sort of things are sites that you can use for people who are into painting. So again, you find the sites, make sure these sites match your niche, make sure they match your target audience, make sure they match the problems you're solving. You then apply, and then you can add those programs to your website, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay, next option you've got there is drop shipping. Now drop shipping is where, similar to affiliate marketing, but the main difference is you handle the sales and customer service and then your, your wholesale supplier manages the shipping and the, um, and the inventory. So they hold the inventory, they manage the shipping, you manage the sales. So if you're selling sewing machines, for example, in the affiliate marketing, you link them off, they manage everything, they have the, and you get the commission. They set the price. Drop shipping, you can set the price. So if you if you've got a, a deal with your supplier where you'll sell, they'll sell effectively sell the same machine for one hundred and fifty dollars. You can go online, write all about the same machine, sell it for two hundred dollars. Once you send them the one hundred fifty dollars plus the shipping, you'll make a fifty dollar profit. That's the difference between the two. Um, you can build up. Some people like drop shipping because they build up their customer list because you're taking their information because you're managing a sale and all that sort of stuff. So it depends how you want that to work, but they're very similar in what they operate. And again, if you're looking for um, drop shippers, you can go do a search for, I've just done arts and crafts drop shipping here. So you can, you've got um, arts and crafts drop ship Alibaba, wholesale2b.com. Um, can you drop ship and make money? So someone there's written more about it. And um, Australian dropshippers love this geographical, so you can see that has come through there as well. So that's dropshipping. The third option you've got, which is very popular in arts and craft, is sell your own. I mean, by nature, arts and craft is creating something that you can sell. So if you're great at pottery, sell your pots. If you're great at knitting, sell your jumpers, sell your scarves, sell your, your beanies or your... Um, we call them beanies here, I don't know, I'm, sure, I'm not sure what they call them, like pom-pom hats in New Zealand, I know that, but so your head, your head warmers, whatever they're called. Um, whatever you can make out of knitting, crocheting blankets, um, paintings, whatever it is that you can make through arts and craft, you can sell. Packs for kids, uh, especially popular over school holiday time, make up little arts and craft kids, packs for kids and sell them online. Whatever you want to sell online, you can, if you can do it with arts and crafts, you can sell it. That's your third option. Fourth option is to set up, and this sort of incorporates some of the other options, other areas we've talked about. So say, for example, you're very good at pottery, you'll do demonstration videos on how to do pottery. What you will then do is at the bottom of your YouTube video or on your website, you will then put links off to where they can buy the clay. Now that could be drop shipping, it could be purchasing clay that you've um, prepared yourself and you know, split into little portions that you can sell, or it could be affiliate marketing. So you are combining your ability to create, to do demonstrations or training. You might then break that down into a subscription-based model where you, you for free, you'll release the first two videos of your complete pottery training course, and then they go in and subscribe to the rest. You still got your affiliate links on there, but you're making money by the subscription. And then you've got the um, you've got the the selling through your affiliate marketing like as well. So you've got your two options there, which you can then you can do via your YouTube channel or whatever. So they're your options to sell: affiliate marketing, drop shipping, selling your own products, which inherently, as I keep mentioning, it solves its own problems. And then, or you can go into coaching or demonstrating and and have other links to it from there. 
Okay, what do we need to do to get all that up and running? Well, I've already mentioned the two main things you need. You need a website and you'll need some social media. Now with your website, with your affiliate marketing, drop shipping, or even your coaching, you'll write all about the problems that you're solving as we've mentioned before. So someone wants to set up their, uh, my wife and son have done been doing tie dyeing recently. So if they have no idea how to do tie dyeing, you'll write a post on problem and how to, how to get set up with, with tie dyeing. Then they will read that post, they'll go off and purchase all the stuff that you've referred to either through drop shipping or your own stuff you've got together or whatever but you'll need a website to do that. Now, if you need help with your website, under the affiliate marketing banner here, I have build a website, which is what you'll need, what you need to do. If you need help building your website, getting set up for affiliate marketing, drop shipping, or anything to do with that, click on this red button here, and I'll take you to a program where you can get some training for free, build your own subdomain website for free. So if you need help with it, getting set up with your online business, Click this button here, I can help you out. Okay, so you've got your website set up and that's, as we say, that's where you write about solving your problems, all that sort of stuff. Then from there, you've also got your social media. Now we've mentioned YouTube because that's where you're gonna do your videos if you're doing coaching or demonstration or the like. YouTube is also a very good search engine. Um, you might've found this video through YouTube rather than through my website. I've got links to both but it's another good way of finding, finding information that you need. Now, you, the other options you've got obviously is Facebook where you can join groups and we'll discuss that in a second, or you can write about things, put up videos and like in there. In the arts and craft, Pinterest and Instagram would, Pinterest would be a must have if you're in the arts and craft niche because it fit, that's a very strong market in there. You can put your finished products, you can put a list of the tools you need if you wanna start doing something. Any go on to Pinterest, have a look at all the search arts and crafts, have a look at all the pins. You'll see all the ideas there. Absolute must if you're in the arts and craft um, niche is Pinterest. Instagram, obviously, for its for its um, visual, so you can take photos of of you doing stuff or photos. You know, a lot of people who do demonstrations and training put pictures on Instagram, showing them doing their videos, and that's another good way to drum up some business there as well. And finally, I mentioned a second ago, Facebook groups. If you're in a knitting niche, get into knitting Facebook groups. If you're in crocheting, crocheting Facebook groups, painting Facebook groups, arts and crafts Facebook groups, whatever is your, your sudden issue and your passion is. The reason for that is because in those groups, those people will start writing about the problems that they need solved right now. Meaning you've got an inside look at exactly what problems people have and exactly what they're looking for you to solve. So then if you're in those groups and people are writing about, well, I'm trying to do this and it's not working, you then build your post, advertise it within Facebook because they, they will have links to you through the groups and they can start. You can't go in there normally and spruik, hi, I'm Paul and this is click on my site. Most, a lot of them have rules against that. But through the, the magic or intrusion of social media, whichever way you look at it, they will see that and you know, you'll start to build, pick people up because you're solving those problems that they're asking that they're, they're, they're talking about right now. And that's it guys. Very quick run through on how to sell arts and crafts online. Pick your niche, a lot of different sub niches within this, this main niche. Who's your target audience? What problems are you solving? Once you've got an idea of that, how are you gonna sell, sell the products? Is it affiliate marketing? Is it drop shipping? Are you gonna sell your own products? Are you gonna set up coaching or online demonstrations and the like from there? Who knows, if you get, get a good following demonstration, you could become an influencer and then people are paying you to use their products. It happens. Um, from there, you'll need a website, you'll need social media. And that's it guys, I know that was a quick run through. Have a good read through the post. If you need any help with this, if you're watching on the YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel below. And if you need any help, please comment. If you're watching this within the post and you have any questions, need help setting up your website, need help with anything to do with affiliate programs, drop shipping programs, how to set up online um, sales pages so you can sell your own products, anything to do with that, please don't hesitate to comment below, ask any questions, any feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks guys, chat to you soon, bye.